in the early 1900s, Albert Einstein came on the scene <laughs> with a vengeance, okay? Now, it had been a couple of hundred years since Newton had described gravity as being like a pull, proportional to the mass of the bodies involved and inversely proportional to the distance between them. But despite that, gravity is instantaneous. You cut that rope, the planet flies off. Newton was wrong, though, on one major point, and the first person, I guess, to really point it out was Albert Einstein. I guess you got to be an Einstein to find an error in Isaac Newton's work, okay? Now, uh, what, what Einstein figured was that if Newton was right, the assumption then is that the force of gravity exceeds the speed of light. But Einstein was of the belief that nothing can exceed the speed of light. Light takes eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. But according to Newton, if the sun disappeared, earth would instantaneously fly off in a straight line. Einstein said, there's no way, this can't be true. And so he came up with a new theory, and it was called the theory of general relativity. And he described the universe as being like a fabric, kind of like a fabric, the fabric of space-time. And you imagine things like, and this is a very common way of describing it, it's like a, a trampoline with a bowling ball in the middle. If I roll a marble around the, the bowling ball, it will follow the curve in orbit around that bowling ball. Now, friction will slow it down. But without friction, that ball would stay in a perpetual orbit. So in fact, the planets are going in a straight line. But they're following the curve of the warp of the fabric of space-time caused by the sun. Now, the problem with the bowling ball and the trampoline model is that it requires gravity to generate gravity. Gravity causes the bowling ball to sink down into the trampoline. But that can't be the case in the universe. The sun's not falling towards something. So there are some aspects of the theory of general relativity that are very difficult to comprehend. Not only that, comets come in from other directions. It, it, I can picture if everything's orbiting around on the surface of the trampoline, okay, I can follow you. But the problem is, of course, comets come in from every direction. They come in from up here, they come in from over here, so from below the trampoline, above the trampoline, and so it becomes very complex. But people continue to use the trampoline model because it gives our, our weak human minds something to kind of picture. You know, it's kind of like this. Not exactly like this, but it's kind of like this. Okay, it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. So, but Einstein said, the, there's no way that Newton could have an instantaneous effect uh, with his gravity model. You see, even gravity has to submit to the speed of light. And so if this fabric were at play, then if the ball of the sun were to disappear, the fabric would ripple away from that point at the speed of light until eventually, at that point, the earth would fly off in a straight line. Okay, but if the sun were to magically disappear, which is not going to, so sometimes we talk about this and it's really inconsequential because it's, it's completely hypothetical, but if it did, we would orbit nothing for eight minutes, okay, and we would be fully illuminated and gravitationally attracted to nothing until the last photon washed across us eight minutes later and the last gravitational wave washed across us eight minutes later. <laughs> we'd orbit nothing for eight minutes. And then we'd be in complete darkness and, and flying off into the cosmos in a straight line. And that, that is Newton's first law, that an object in motion will stay in motion until another force acts upon it. So Newton wasn't totally wrong on everything. He got that part right. But Einstein was the one who figured out through his theory of general relativity that, in fact, gravity cannot be instantaneous.